Recently, I asked about the novel, this edition Stop Stories. Members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force received a training in the detection of firearms trafficking. A major initiative is underway to prevent and reduce tobacco use in St. Lucia. And PAHO calls on countries to protect children as they too are vulnerable to COVID-19 and its impact. A training course on the detection of firearms trafficking opened earlier today at the Police Training Academy at Latok. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and CARICOM Impacts is facilitating the training, which will focus on detection of firearms trafficking through postal and fast parcels and at land and maritime borders targeting competent law enforcement, customs, defense and security forces responsible for border controls. CARICOM Impacts Regional Crime and Security Strategy Coordinator Callistus Joseph explained that representatives of St. Lucia and CARICOM Impacts recently met with representatives of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, ATF, to create a structured framework to assist the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to enhance its tracing capabilities. Getting illegal firearms off our streets and out of the hands of criminals means less violence. And that means safer communities. You'd have a safer view fort, you'd have a safer castries, a safer ancillary, and a safer St. Lucia. CARICOM impacts through our collective actions with national authorities in CARICOM, international authorities, civil society organizations, research institutions, and other partners will work with the government of St. Lucia to prevent the trafficking of illicit firearms and ensure illicit guns do not end up on the streets. The training came into being after CARICOM Impacts and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, participated in a needs assessment and consultations with the government of St. Lucia, which included key entities. A number of issues were brought to the fore which required immediate assistance. These included the strengthening of the country's firearms tracing mechanism to assist criminal investigators to track the origin and purchase of crime gangs to support criminal prosecutors and capacity building training on the detection of firearms trafficking. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of Home Affairs, Ricky Quinlan, highlighting the challenges faced by St. Lucia in detecting firearms trafficking, welcomed the training. The Caribbean, with St. Lucia being no exception, has been grappling with the entry of illicit firearms and the misuse of these firearms, primarily by criminal elements, to terrorize, steal, pillage and take lives. The crime landscape has changed completely as guns have become the preferred weapons for settling scores no matter how trivial, resulting in oftentimes in homicides. That is why the government continues to subscribe to the Caribbean Firearms Roadmap. It is very well articulated that the UNODC Global Firearms Project supports regional efforts to counter the illicit circulation of firearms and to curtail the linkages to other serious crimes. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and CARICOM Impacts will facilitate the training, which will take place from September 21 to 24, 2021, at the Police Training Academy at La Talk. Following this training, St. Lucia will be equipped with additional capabilities to help law enforcement officials identify gang traffickers, potential suspects, and patterns of violent gang crime to help solve criminal cases. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. In other law enforcement news, an inmate at the Bodley Correctional Facility is being questioned by police investigators in relation to the death of another inmate, Noah Peter. The Bodley Correctional Facility, BCF, located in Denry, has been in the spotlight since the occurrence of separate stabbing incidents, which resulted in the death of two male inmates within the same week. The correctional facility was made aware of the death of 21-year-old Noah Peter on Saturday, September 18, 2021. 
Peter, who was born on March 11, 2000, hailed from the community of Mondidor and had been on remand for the offense of stealing. Due to the seriousness of his injuries, Noah Peter had been listed as critical and had been admitted in ICU at the St. Jude Hospital, Vuefort. On Thursday, September 16, 45 year old inmate Kelvin Wilson was found lying unresponsive in a pool of blood in his cell. Kelvin Wilson, also known as Carlos or Goats, was later pronounced dead by a medical doctor. It was determined that he had been stabbed multiple times. The death is being investigated by police. Wilson was admitted at the facility on April 15, 2003, in relation to murder. The Body Lake Correctional Facility extends condolences to both families. St. Lucia receives support from regional organizations to provide interventions to help individuals prevent and reduce tobacco use. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat in the Ministry of Health has been undertaking a series of workshops aimed at equipping individuals in the health and social care sectors with the necessary guidelines to assist tobacco users to quit. Deputy Coordinator of the Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat, Joanna Joseph Henry, spoke on the need to ensure tobacco control and tobacco dependency treatment as St. Lucia implements smoke-free spaces. We are implementing smoke-free spaces, but at the same time, we are offering help to individuals who need help to quit. We know it's not easy, but we encourage anybody who is smoking or anybody who knows somebody who is smoking to encourage that person to get help. If you're not sure where to go, you can check with your wellness center. As we implement, the wellness centers will all be able to offer eventually. But um, you can also call our office at the Substance Abuse Secretariat so that we can put you in touch with one of our service providers. The deputy coordinator highlighted the involvement of various agencies to work towards delivering tobacco interventions. We have over, over 30 agencies who are participating in this training. So the wellness centers from the Ministry of Health, the pharmacists, some of them, um, the doctors, nurses, social workers, as well as community officers in the other ministries, the boys training center, the bodily correctional facility, all of those types of agencies are going to be able to offer this service. So the way it's going to run is that this will be integrated into the normal routine of these individuals. And it's very easy to deliver. A set, it's an algorithm or a structured set of interventions um, that is based on very sound clinical, medical, and psychological theories and approaches. The Tobacco Cessation Training Workshop was made possible through the technical and financial assistance of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, and the World Health Organization, WHO. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, I am Fana Neptune. As more adults receive their COVID-19 vaccines, children who are not yet eligible for vaccination in most countries are representing a larger percentage of COVID hospitalizations and even deaths. That's according to the director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne. She says children and young people also face significant social impacts as a result of COVID-19. More from Homer DeMarc. Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, is appealing to the region to recognize the significant impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the health and well-being of children and adolescents. The PAHO director highlights that more than 1.5 million COVID-19 cases in children were reported in 2020. In 2021, that number has surpassed the 1.9 million. As more adults receive their COVID-19 vaccines, Children who are not yet eligible for vaccinations in most countries are representing a larger percentage of COVID hospitalizations and even deaths. So let's be clear. Children and young people also face a significant risk of disease from COVID-19. The pandemic is also affecting children's health in other ways. 
kids across our region are missing out on annual checkups and routine vaccinations because of the widespread disruptions to health services. Half of young people have experienced increased stress or anxiety during the pandemic, yet mental health services and support remain out of the reach for many. Dr. Etienne says the region is also recording alarming rates of teenage pregnancy due to disruptions in sexual and reproductive health services. Beyond the direct impact on their health, the virus indirectly has consequences and are hindering their growth and their development and jeopardizing their chances at a bright future. Lockdowns and economic disruptions have increased the risk of domestic violence. And for many kids, homes may not be a safe place. Our kids have missed more school days than children in any other region. And despite efforts to leverage virtual classrooms, these can never substitute in-person schooling because schools are not only places where children get an education, they are also places where children socialize and can receive mental health support or a nutritious meal. In addition to following the established protocols to keep children safe, Dr. Carissa Etienne is encouraging countries in the region to work assiduously towards the reopening of schools. There is no zero risk scenario. So national and local authorities should decide when it's time to open or close schools, depending on the local epidemiological situation and the capacity to respond. PAHO has developed detailed guidelines on the measures that are needed for school reopening, such as proper ventilation and sanitary conditions, and, and has published recommended measures to protect young people from COVID-19 infection. As vaccines become available, teachers and school, and school staff should be prioritized for vaccines because adults are more likely to bring the virus into the classrooms. Dr. Etienne is calling on ministries of health, education, and social protection to collaborate and design integrated policies that will prioritize children and families. From the Government Information Service, Humadi Mark reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. C'est l'année, l'année 2019 et puis l'année 2020. Le gouvernement a passé deux lois pour régler cette pratique qui a concerné la santé publique. Première, un ben non, changement de loi contre les femmes. Deuxième loi, c'était pour empêcher les femmes en pièce de place publique. Tel qu'au Kabawe, Bar, Westowan, Lens, à bord transport public, à bord taxi, et puis en pièce de place réservée pour les gens et puis débattre. N'importe quel type de transport. C'est obligation nous toutes pour connaître et puis respecter ces lois. Pour si vous êtes nous et puis protéger les gens. Si la loi trappe coupable et bien pièce business coupable agit contre des lois sala. La loi a ordonné que en la main 5 000 dollars pour monde qui n'y agit personnellement et puis 10 000 pour pièce business. C'est pour nous changer qui en tant maladie Covid 19 sala. Qui nous fume nous mêmes et bien mettez qu'on nous en situation pour nous c'est cette âme c'est l'habitude qui dangereux pour cette nous. À nous nous tout décider pour faire génération sala à génération sans fumer. This is a message from the Minister of Health and Wellness, supported by Paolo on this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. Monsieur Tan, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Department qui responsabilité pour information à gouvernement cette fois-ci, ça c'est GIS. Ensemble puis télévision nationale puis NTN. Capuzato Nouvelle à Creole. Visito Primus Hutchinson. Yon gon spectacle culturel. Cette lesi, et puis entre cette lesi, et puis Taïwan, plus bonne masala, c'est yon qui a placé PIA à de yon position pour toute la terre sa oué de gwe qualité talent qui cette lesi ni. Si gote, Palema, ministère des Affaires touristiques, honorable Gibian Ferdinand, dit qui dit ça. A di wan yon gwa spektak kultural sa la ki te pwe kou Pigeon Island kote yon robot te fey posib 
pour les peuples des pays là ça a diverses performances culturelles et aussi diverses valeurs touristiques que chaque ces pays là ni pour offrir selon on est au fond d'une initiative là qu'a présenté une occasion a été présenté en occasion côté cette ici par exhibition ça là montrer ces meilleurs bénéfices touristiques et culturels pays ni pour offrir pas seulement pour peuple taïwan ouais mais pour tout le reste de la terre l'année de vers pays qui ni en chaîne intérêt en affaires cette ici et puis c'est pour ça nous ni tourism et puis on bagaille comme ça moi croyais qu'il bon pas pour taïwan seulement mais pour nous ça servir technologie à pour nous ça fait l'autre place ouais qui ça cette ici qui a produit qui ça cette ici ni et puis pour mon l'autre l'autre pays Amérique Angleterre la Chine et puis l'autre côté ça vient à visiter place nous Je voulais remercier l'ambassade de Taïwan et le gouvernement de le gouvernement Taïwan pour le projet ça. Je crois que c'est un bon bagage. Et puis, je crois que nous allons continuer à collaborer pour faire ça à continuer plus mer. Le ministère de la Santé de le a enregistré 19 cas de maladie corona lundi 20 en mois de septembre 2021. Ces cas de maladie sont sortis à un test qui a été fait dimanche 19 en mois de septembre 2021 en laboratoire Ezra Long a dans un total de 78. C'est le mot cas positif ça là, placé à degré 24.4% en tout test qui ministère a été conduit pour date ça là. Ce cas neuf ça là porté le mot maladie corona en pays pour 10624. Ministère aussi recevoir confirmation de 112 individus qui j'ai fait bien après ils ont été trouvés affectés et puis corona ça porté le mot cas qui est actif pour 2 180 Trois en ces cas, ça a été critique présentement, avec 12 en yon malade, malade sérieusement en l'hôpital Victoria. Pour le présent, en total de 35 561 individus, j'ai reçu la première dose la vaccine AstraZeneca, avec 29 et 18, j'ai reçu la deuxième dose là. En total de 7 870 individus, j'ai reçu la première dose là. Ça c'est la vaccine Pfizer. Pendant 128 individus, j'ai reçu la deuxième dose là. Demain, si vous voulez, le service de la vaccine, qui est prêt à faire la paresse en vieux fort, le Human Resource Center à Gozile, comme la paresse de nuit, et People's Discount Drugstore à Sula Victoria. Mais ça qui est fait pas après moi seulement, ça veut dire uh, Denry et uh, Discount Drug Store, commencer à 9h bon matin pour jusqu'à 4h après-midi. Le ministère de Santé a continué pour procurer des informations tous les jours pour le public là, quand l'information est là, et pour plus d'informations, il y a un chef contact avec le bureau chef, officier médical, et aussi l'épidémiologie unit, en limo 4685309, et bien 4685309. En parlant de ça, le ministère de Santé a trouvé une situation pour adresser la maladie corona à l'égoué 4e pèse maladie de Salah qui commençait le 25 juillet 2021. Les Grecs à ministère fait comprendre que malgré le ministère a continué pour opérer et délivrer ces services qui méritent, la pèse maladie a placé en pile force à ces officiers et travailleurs qui ont tant limité déjà. À part de ça, la nous travaillons qui est en quarantaine. Pour résoudre cela, il est devenu nécessaire pour le ministère de fermer deux ou trois wellness centers pour deux ou trois jours. Et que aussi wellness centers la guerre, Babono, Tiroshi, Castri, Delce, Chouazei, Soufouye et Fosse Jacques Soufouye. Pour les gens qui ont servi ces wellness centers, il y a un peu de temps pour visiter l'autre wellness center qui est plus près. Mais pendant ces wellness centers, il y a un peu de temps. C'est Health Aids là qui continue pour délivrer le service pour ces communes. À part de ça, le ministère a réduit à ce ces services en CT Wellness Center pour faire possible pour ces officiers avoir un meilleur service à vaccine. Mais durant ça, le service de santé pour les gens qui ont souffert et puis, puis ça doit être pressure et le service de santé pour madame qui a et bien pour les enfants qui est des enfants, etc., ça va continuer. La clinique pour ces wellness centers, ça a euh, commencé, et puis, Canary, c'est mardi et mercredi. Vana, c'est lundi et mardi. Les étangs, c'est mardi et mercredi. 
saltibis se madi an gwas vie fos e mekodi ek tiroche miku se ledi ek jedi mon gouj choisei se madi ek mekodi tout klinik dokte kay weste an menm fason ki te jaye se chejwa sa la kay diwe pou 2 semen komanse ledi le 20 septem 2021 ek an finisman 2 semen nan yon akses souman kay fet pou gade si kay nesese pou kontinye se servis sa la an fason sa la minister de sante ka fè pebik la sav ki yo ka konprann ki se chejwa sa la kay afekte moun men yi nesese pou se pou adrese service santé concernant les situations malade corona à cette ici. Et c'est comme ça notre bout nouvelle là. Mon cher monsieur Otan pour kagade mon rabon invitation pour jeune puis moi encore si dieu conserve la vie côté mon cher présenter l'autre nouvelle à croire à présent mon cher vieux présenter Chanel. Merci Apple Primus. We now take a look at the weather. Forecast for Saint Dusha valid for the next 24 hours. Sunrise Wednesday, 5.53 a.m. Winds will be blowing from between the east, southeast and east near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour, becoming lighter at times. Weather fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. Seas slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0 0.6 to 1.2 meters. Tides for the Castries Harbour were high at 4.01 p.m. and low at 9.55 p.m. Tides for the VFR Bay were high at 5.08 p.m. and low at 11.22 p.m. A strong tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. The system has a high chance of tropical cyclone formation during the next five days. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.